Hello. Today I want to show you how you can run Python code natively in Adams. This is possible thanks to JEP, the library, which stands for Java Embedded Python. And that JEP library basically embeds C Python and Java through the Java native interface, JNI. And that way you can basically run any Python library that is available natively through Java. So first thing you need to do is downloading a recent snapshot that has the Adams JEP module installed, for instance, the Adams ML app. So I've done that. Then we need to have a Python virtual environment available. That can be either a global one or a local one that we then activate. There's two methods for that. I'll just show one here. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna create Python environment just using the VNF module that comes with Python and then I'm installing the JEP library it's installed and then we're activating that library uh, that virtual environment to have that library available and since we now are in that Python virtual environment, I can then start up Adams in that context and then it has access to the JEP library. So that needs to be not only available on the Java side, which Adams has, but also in the virtual environment in Python. Okay, so for a quick test, um, there's a JEP Python console now under the tools menu. So they can do simple things um, like calculations and then we can output the whole thing. Um, the usual thing you can open, save and whatnot, um, undo and all these things. Um, one thing is because there's basically a global instance of Python running, a global interpreter, the standard output and standard error from the Python interpreter gets output one thing in the terminal. So you will see something here in the terminal that I started at Adams from. Plus you can also see it in the Adams console window. However, some libraries um, that are not native Python may not use print statements or Python interpreter standard out standard error. So they may output something more. So it pays to have a terminal open just to see what's outputting there. Anyhow, so we have this little script here and I can now basically run that and see what happens. Uh -huh. As you can see, name C is not defined. It is absolutely correct because there's a typo and I'll rerun that script now. And you can see it's outputs three here and three down there. So that worked. Of course, we can also run more complicated things. Um, I will first show something how you can use it in the flow. Start up the flow editor. And then I'm just going to look for um, basically a simple script. So this is basically what I've just had um, in the JEP console. So I have here a JEP standalone and um, I can have either um, a script file so that I have in another text file or I can inline the script. So sometimes if you want to uh, make a flow self-contained. The inline script is great. When you're developing things, it's sometimes easier not um, having basically the script open in a text editor and writing it and fixing it and then just running the flow until everything's working. And then after that, you can, for instance, then inline it um, and then run with it. So there's a couple of things. So the inline script, as you've seen here, excellent. That's a is e equals one, B is uh, assigned to two, and then C is assigned to the sum of it. And as you can see, there is no print statement. How do we get anything out of it? 
and that's where the inputs and outputs come in. They are if we're going on the help here. Inputs and outputs, they're basically storage items um, and a relationship between storage items and variable names in the interpreter. So as input, um, you're basically defining what variable name in the Python interpreter gets what storage item from the atom side of things assigned. And with the outputs, what variable from the Python interpreter gets assigned to what storage item so that we can access things that have been um, generated in the Python interpreter. And going back, oops, getting back in here, you can see I'm assigning the storage item C with what was coming from the variable C. And in our script, C holds our result. And then I can basically continue and for instance output what was coming out of C. If I run the whole thing, then we basically get the same thing as we did with our JEP console, it's outputting 3. But this is basically using the value within the flow. You can of course also use variables. Um, so in this case, um, oops, I'm setting a variable A to 12. And if I go in my JEP standalone, you now see that I have a atoms variable in there, which then that value, what that variable represents, gets then assigned to A. And what happens here is you have to ha tick also expand variables so that whenever that script gets executed, the current state of the variables gets expanded in that script and then that script gets executed. And the same thing here, we're outputting the result of the computation again. And if we're running that, considering that it's 12 and B is 2, should be 14. Let's see whether that really happens. And yes, we get 14 out. Very good. All right. Then the next thing would be, let's have something a little bit more complicated. And in this case, it is about building a TensorFlow model and then making a prediction with that and outputting the result of the prediction. So if I'm going into the script, it's a little bit more involved. So it's based on an example script that you can find up here. That basically loads a regression data set from this following URL using pandas. Um, it then splits it into features and labels creates a simple um, sort of like dense layer with one output then, that's the regression output. Um, as loss we're using the mean squared error and then we are training the model for 10 um, epochs. And in this case I'm outputting the model and storing that in the model storage item. Here with the prediction data, I'm basically creating a new array that's sort of seven input variables that get turned into an array. And then for making the prediction, that's a very short line. I, oops, I should probably show that. The input is my model from storage, which I store in the Avalon model parameter in the interpreter. And the data vector then also gets stored in the parameter called data and outputting then will be the predictions. So if I'm going at the script, which is just a one-liner, you can see my Avalon model, which gets input in the interpreter, and my data vector, which gets reshaped by NumPy to obtain the predictions. So when I'm running that, Oops, it says no module numpy, which is correct because I actually haven't installed anything. So I'm going to quickly install numpy pandas 
in TensorFlow Oops. install might work that takes a wee while TensorFlow is not the smallest library It's being installed now. Okay, that's installed. Okay, and let's try that again. And now we can see that the training is happening here. And as a prediction, we're getting then 8.7 out through our prediction side of things. And of course, we can also grab that script from here and then go over and into our console and we can also run things there if you wanted to. So for instance, if you're prototyping some scripts, you could do that there before you then push it in there, like I mentioned earlier. So you can basically just execute that and then you see the same thing happening here as well. But since I'm not saving the model or doing anything with it, we don't see anything else happening here. So that's it. And with that, you can now run Python easily from within Atoms, nicely expanding all the functionality that's actually out there, especially like Pandas, TensorFlow, PyTorch and these things um, for making it easier for running all kinds of things. Thanks for watching.